So you've just started, many of you first years, and uh, when did term start? Just a couple of days ago. All right. Well, in that case, I'm particularly honoured because you must have a hell of a lot of reading to do and a lot of work to do, and you decided to spend tonight with me, which I hope will be life-changing. Uh, if nothing... At, do, by the way, did you click it? You didn't forget. We're going live on TikTok, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about me first, and... You all want to be entrepreneurs. I'm hoping to save you a hell of a lot of time uh, from not going down the wrong routes, the wrong roads, and accelerate your success from everything that I know and from the companies that I've been working with over the last, oh God, million years. I set up a hedge fund back in 2004. Then we set up a private equity fund. I've got a software company. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of stuff I've done myself, but that's not what's important. What's important is also the entrepreneurs that I've worked with both in my capacity within the Department for Business and Trade, where I am uh, what's called one of the government's deal makers. And I kid you not, on my government business card, it actually does say deal maker, uh, which was, you know, a really big deal until Donald Trump stole the title. But I've still got that title. It's still on the card. And what deal makers do is we look for outstanding technology companies from around the world, entrepreneurs who might be young like you from universities around the world, with a view to helping them set up their global headquarters in the UK, help them with funding, finding the right sources of funding. If we think the entrepreneur's good, what do we look for? I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you, so you can be that thing that is more likely to get funded. And we help open doors for them. And I'm going to show you and tell you which ones succeeded, what they have in common, so that you can replicate it. And you yourself will hopefully Statistically, you're not all likely to become unicorns, but I'll tell you what some of the ones which we developed, who, which did, became billion dollar companies, what they had in common, and what some of the ones which will probably in the future become that big, have in common. I'm gonna move this chair out of the way because it's really bugging me. Uh, what they had in common, so that you can replicate those things. Okay, and that's gonna save you a hell of a lot of time because the one thing you think you've all got tons of, because you're all ridiculously, stupidly young, is time. But you don't. It'll just go like this. And you do not want to get the wrong venture or the wrong startup as your first one and then be set back five years, six years. Nothing wrong with failure, but you'd rather succeed first time round. And that's my job is to try and help you do that. Those are essentially all you're left with is your memory fades as you get older is photos. And apparently those are all the things that I've done and all the rest of it. But uh, I will not know how to work the clicker. Is it the up arrow? No, it's that one. No. I think I've broken it already. Come back in and see you. <laughs> now they're thinking, wait a minute, we're taking advice from a guy who can't work a clicker? <laughs> uh, whilst Hader does that, I'll give you a bit more background uh, about me. So I, that one. That one. That one. Yeah, okay, that. perfect. Obviously, the down one. Uh, as, a, as a government deal maker, as I said, what I do is I look for these outstanding technology companies. They approached me back in 2004 because they said, you've got good networks. Uh, you, I had a weekly column in the Financial Times at that time, and so that helped build networks, and we'll talk about networks in a second. But I thought, what's a good sort of summary of telling you in terms of what I did? Look, most of it, most of entrepreneurship, it's that. I'm sorry, it's that. I know social media will make you think it's that, and I do do a hell of a lot of that. I'm lucky, to, lucky enough to say, and I do get to take my mum to meet the king and so on. Um, I've, I've not, not killed anyone yet. It's mainly that. It's mainly hard work. So I'm going to drill that down and also my own experiences within uh, business. My own background being in investment and asset management and hedge funds. And you might think, why the hell would you want to do that? I actually trained as a barrister. So I qualified as a barrister, practiced for all of one year, and then realized it wasn't for me. And I started investing when I was about 12 years old. I bought my first stock uh, with £100, borrowed from my aunt when I was 12 years old. And I loved it. And I did it because uh, I'd come across uh, Das Kapital. And um, I just thought, has anybody come across? I don't expect you to have read Karl Marx's Das Kapital, but has anybody come across it? You have. No one else. The sort of tome of Marxism and communism. OK, uh, workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. Ring a bell? Fantastic. Well, that's communism screwed then. It's amazing. 1984 
when I first came across it, people would have known exactly what I was talking about. Anyway, essentially, it made me realize I did not want to be a worker because the whole book is about how they're just totally screwed. So I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I assume every single one of you wants to be an entrepreneur. Is that right? I mean, put your hands up if you want to be an entrepreneur. You want to be a business owner. You didn't put your hand up. I mean, either you're just here to keep your mate company or you're in the long, wrong lecture theater. You thought it's calculus 301 or something. And that's why I got into buying stocks because for the sake of a hundred quid, I could have some of the world's cleverest people at say Microsoft or Apple or Amazon basically working for me. Because as a shareholder, they presumably help put the share price up. Then I discovered actually that some of them are really rubbish at putting the share price up. HSBC, for instance, and Lloyd's and, uh, and some are better than others. So anyway, that was it. It was so simple. Why not just be the capitalist pig? Own some shares and somebody else is doing all the work for you. We are absolute uh, parasites on society. We do absolutely nothing useful. Pay a bit of tax. Probably could pay more. But other than that, we don't create anything. We don't invent anything. If anybody tells you hedge fund managers create or invent anything, absolute lies. If we invest in other people's businesses that go on to do great things like discover cures for cancer, then we might be useful. If we donate to charities, then we might be useful. But in and of itself, finance, shuffling paper. When I was at university, my economic student said, please don't go in the city and just shuffle paper. I decided to go into the city and shuffle digital files. Paper's gone now, but that's what I do. So I'm gonna to talk to you about entrepreneurship and being useful to society instead of just being a hedge fund manager. Or even if you do become a hedge fund manager and set up your own fund, then at least do something useful with that money and give it away. One thing that I, um, a resource I put together, because when I gave these talks, uh, people would ask me, okay, which are all the best sites where my business might get funded? What are all the UK sites for which give grants, which give loans, which uh, give equity funding, angel funding? Where can I find a whole list of all the angel investors that I might want to go by the sector I'm in or by the size and scale of my business? Or where are the networking events that maybe London Business Angels, whoever, who should I speak to? What does a good business plan look like? So I put it all into one website. And the reason it's called the Einstein Challenge, it's actually the EinsteinChallenge.com and it's got a ton of free resources I put up. Uh, I assume you all know who that is. You don't know who Karl Marx is, but you know who that is. Yes. Thank God, otherwise I was leaving. It was his birth anniversary yesterday. So the Einstein Challenge, it was called the Einstein Challenge because Albert Einstein said of Mahatma Gandhi, generations to come will scarcely believe that one such as this of flesh and blood ever walked this earth. So since that was Einstein's challenge, the best way to sort of keep it alive was to offer resources for people to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And that's what's on there. And that's what the entrepreneur should do. When you create your business, I hope it won't be a new flavor of biscuit or a new games app. I hope it'll be something which will help solve some of the world's biggest problems, okay? And thanks to the work I've done with government, we've worked with, and I'll tell you in this talk, what these companies have in common. We've worked with companies like this, which has just raised a quarter of a billion from Microsoft at a billion dollar plus valuation, Builder.ai. But I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, other companies like Carbon Clean Solutions, which takes out carbon out of the air. And so we try and work with companies and entrepreneurs who are solving some of the world's biggest problems. And there seems to be more money for that. So I'm going to sh explain to you where you might look to get the money, what a good business plan looks like, so that you don't spend hours and hours like 99% of the businesses that I see, which is just wasting your time. Because somebody hasn't told you, just move one degree this way and you'll be a lot better. And now's the time because you're still at university. Do this 10 years from now and you'll be so far down the road, you really can't afford to get things wrong. So now's the time to do this. I'm going to show you some of the resources and some of the things that I learned. Now, before I go into some of the business plans, I'm going to show you actual businesses that I've invested in and why those companies managed to raise tens of millions. But they're relatable, as Hader said. We want them to be relatable because they're actually businesses that you might come up with. And I'm also going to show you a little trick or a hack where if you don't know what business you might want to set up, it's a really good way of getting great ideas. It's not ChatGPT. It's a really good way of getting great ideas, not stealing them, but actually being inspired by them. And I'm going to show you those as well in a second. Now, first things first, networking. Thank God you're all here because you'll have the opportunity to network. And I'll tell you why this is important. There's the old saying, your net worth is commensurate to your networks. Has anybody heard that? Yeah. 
Just say, just nod from now on, because you missed the Karl Marx thing, you got the Gandhi thing, but just, just anything I ask you, just, yeah, we know that, Alpesh. Networks. I wouldn't have got the funding in my first venture were it not for the fact that I, by good fortune or whatever else, made the effort to network. Now I'm an introvert. You might not believe it, but I actually am. And I didn't have a silver spoon. I grew up in Leeds, in, born in a place called Armley, and you didn't have people who were going to throw money at you. Okay, it wasn't the whole Eaton connection, nothing like that. So how the hell do you get the networks? Because your first venture is probably going to have to be funded by friends and family, or you'll be incubated here, you've got an accelerator here. It's going to have to be through those connections and networks, and you've got to get out, you've got to make the effort and all the rest of it. It is one of the secret sources shortcuts, is getting out there and networking. For me, that network came through an organization called TAI, the Indus Entrepreneurs. It exists in the UK. It is part of the world's largest entrepreneur mentoring organizations, and it's free. Their mentoring is free. It was set up in Silicon Valley by the founder of Hotmail, which was then sold to uh, Microsoft. And uh, one of the other co-founders was Vinod Kosler. Does anybody know who Vinod Kosler is? You know what ChatGPT is? He's one of the largest shareholders in ChatGPT. So he set up Kosler Ventures. And then after Elon Musk and others gave grant funding to ChatGPT, he was the first equity investor. So they all just gave it money thinking we're doing social good, AI, let's see where it goes. He came along, my fellow Indian, and said, no, 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 I want some equity. I think one day he's probably going to be the world's richest man. But anyway, so they started, so he was one of the co-founders of um, TAI, the Indus Entrepreneurs. I co-founded the UK chapter, Mentoring Entrepreneurs. And we've seen a hell of a lot of entrepreneurs through that. And I'll share with you again in what I'm going to say on what helped them succeed. Networking at those events helped me meet people who then eventually funded my first major venture, which was the hedge fund. It could have been anything else, but they funded it. And it was turning up and turning up and turning up. First time, doesn't work. You've got to keep going up. Now, you all want to network amongst people who are sort of two or three or four or ten layers above. That's the nature of networking. So I found that joining boards helped, joining committees helped, because that's when they really get to know you. I mean, committees outside, so I joined Chatham House, that helped. Uh, but Thai, when it was created, and volunteering and helping. Now, it's a bit of a pain because you've got enough work to do at university, but just getting into that habit and opening up those doors. Equally, you could, like Mark Zuckerberg had, just have a rich roommate, but allowing for chance and that not happening, uh, I'm afraid networking is important. Now, the good news for us introverts is, since those days, uh, so Pan's an alumnus of City University. He did his MBA here. Uh, no, I did uh, my master's uh, MSc. You did your uh, MSc here. Um, Pan and Hilton, who did his MBA here? Uh, we did that uh, class. Well, look, I'm just going to shut up now. It was the same Are you even the, yeah, set part of the same university? Yeah, and it's affiliated to here, isn't it? Thank God, I've got one thing right. So they, when they were here, they developed the business plan. Yeah, I've got that right. Whilst you were studying <laughs> for the hedge fund, for Marble Bar, and for Kite Securities. Marble Bar now has, what, four billion under management? Five, it peaked at five billion under my, but they did it while they were at university. So because you've got that extra time, because God knows by the time you have wife and kids and whatever else, you get a bit busy, you know, tiny bit. But uh, it's a great time now to start exploring. Looking, that's why I'm going to show you some business plans because I want you to know where the bar is. I don't want you to guess by the end of this talk. Oh, what about this? What about that? What about this? No, I want you to know. Right, this is the level. This is the standard. Okay, with it. Now, the great thing about networking in the age of social media is LinkedIn. Um, you don't necessarily have to be at all these events and everything else, but please, for the love of God, post. Get your expertise and post on that area of expertise so that when somebody you approach for funding does do the due diligence on you, they're not shocked to find that actually you know nothing about the area that you're looking to be in, that you do actually have a passion for it. And it'll be a hell of a lot easier if it is an area you have passion for. It's a heck of a lot easier making money in a business that you actually enjoy that area. Most people don't have a love for business. They have a love for the thing. There's very rare people like Richard Branson who just have a love for business and any business. Most people have a love for, like me, finance. They don't like any kind of business. To so find that passion, that doesn't necessarily come from Malaysia, Singapore, and now pretty much globally. I look at fintech companies, cybersecurity companies in particular at the moment. But to be honest, anything which crosses my path, and, and I'll tell you what the winning ones have done and what they, uh, what they haven't. 
one of the most difficult things for those companies when they're scaling up and growing is getting hold of people. And one of the things that I tell them is, look, when you want to get hold of someone for your scale up or your growth and you don't know how to get hold of them, go on LinkedIn, then go on Lucia or go on Cognizant or some such thing and you will be able to get hold of their email addresses. You will find them. That's part of that building up that network. And you're going to need to do things like that. You won't be able to build it in a silo. Uh, you said something very interesting, Hader, uh, in my bio, and I think most people probably missed it. You said, thanks be to God, in the middle of it all. Whether it's God or good luck, a lot of it's going to happen by chance. You will, of course, think it is your own incredible skill and that you were just destined as the chosen one. We all have that, that bias in us, uh, self-attribution bias, I think they call it. But actually, a lot of it's going to be chance. And the way you're going to get lucky is you're going to be reaching out. You're going to be right. How, you got hold of me because of TikTok, because I do little videos on this area and become an expert in it. Business Insider magazine found me as a result of that. By being out there, and you keep hearing this, you'll hear it from the Zuckerbergs of the world and everybody else saying, oh, you just got to be out there. What the hell does that mean? Whatever business, even if you haven't got the business idea yet, you can at least do these other things. And um, the being out there, the little video posts or the little articles, the knowledgeable ones which built, I mean, think about it. You're doing a blasted degree. You're becoming experts. You will have views on things. Posting those views, not, I don't mean as a tweet. I mean, as a proper little article. It might be even an essay that you've researched and written that you've got to submit to your tutor or for a seminar. Having that, so you've got a reputation. So for me, uh, what had happened, how I got into this area, and I saw these shortcuts, these little shortcuts to success was uh, when I wanted to go into trading, I thought I better meet the world's leading traders. I mean, you start at the top. And that's one thing which for some reason people don't do. They think, oh, no, 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 I'm only a student. I better start at the bottom. You've got an incredible advantage. You're young, you're starting out. People want to help you. It's a weird thing. You reached out and said, you didn't expect me to reply back. And I said, you're an educational institution. Why would I not reply back? It's just one of those decent things humans in a society should do. For me, when I wanted to meet the world's leading traders, because I wanted to trade, I approached 10 of the world's leading traders and said, look, if you agree to, be, uh, if you agree to meet me and be interviewed by me, the Financial Times are going to publish the book of the interviews. Because they're not going to meet me for a coffee. I mean, what I'm talking about here is don't just you know, spray and pray and hope somebody can oh, oh, have a coffee, please. No. I mean, come on. There's a limit to when I say help. I want to see some traction. What are you doing? What have you done? If you say, I've achieved this, 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 and this, can we meet up? Because I want to ask you this, this, and this. Hey, then we might get a meeting and them as well. So I said, to, and then I said to the Financial Times, I've got 10 of the world's leading traders. Do you want to publish the book? And it worked. And of course, when you meet some of the world's leading traders, they know why you're there. I mean, think about it. If you you want to be a trader and you meet global head of foreign exchange trading at Salomon's at the time, he knows I'm there to ask him, mate, how do I get stupidly rich? He knows that. But there's an interview. There's a transaction. The book was published. It's how I know Paresh and Pan because they were both they both were involved in the setup of the hedge fund, um, which one of the traders that I met had funded. Networks. But here's the thing, by going out there, now in my day, you wrote a book. You guys are lucky. You don't even have to go to all that trouble. Now you just get your social media stuff going on. That book I, got me an interview on CNN. Here's where God's good graces comes in. And the global head of TV at Bloomberg happened to be watching that interview. And she said, would you like your own show? And the editor of the Financial Times Weekend Edition said, yeah, I'm quite good at this. Do you, want a, do you want a weekly column? Now, that's luck. I, you can't replicate that. But what you can do is put yourself in a position to be out. If you're stuck in your room all day long, that ain't going to happen. And you might say, well, that's, like, well, that's winning the lottery. That's one in a million. And from there, I got the investors. The FT said, would you do a competition? Would you participate in a competition to forecast the markets? Which I won, so you need skill. So yeah, there were 0.01 percentages, but I made sure, I didn't know they were gonna come along, but I knew something's gonna come along if I go out there and meet the world's leading trade. If I go out there and write about the subject matter, something's gonna happen, you're stirring shit up. Something's gonna happen if you keep doing it. But if you don't even do that and say, oh no, it's not for me, oh, you're just lucky, oh, you must have come from a rich family, no. Oh, you just, you had some other secret connection, not gonna work. If you've got that attitude, it ain't gonna work. It's the optimist. It's the stupidly optimistic who succeed. It is the stupidly optimistic who cannot do a proper bloody cost benefit analysis and think that they're just going to be stupidly successful that are. Because looking back on 
our careers in entrepreneurship if somebody said now looking back would you do it given how hard it was i don't know many would say yeah I, i'll go through that hell hole that i went through i probably wouldn't you don't need to do it first time around and that's what happened so get out there on the social media stuff the other thing is and this is why i want to show you some of the standards of the level i need you to be at because sometimes when you don't know this, what often happens is um, people sort of plug away. They don't know. They haven't spoken to others because maybe they don't have the demographic. They don't have the networks. Okay. And two of the groups that are the least likely statistically or per capita to succeed in Britain, as you may well know, and I'm talking about per capita or statistically, uh, least likely to get funded or least likely to have their venture succeed are, any guesses, demographically? White men better not put their hands up. Pan, you better not put your hand up. Morgan, forget about it. You've even got a posh name. Fame, yeah. And women. Okay, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So, use it. Let's talk about using part of that, as well as if you are unfortunate like Morgan to be a white male, how to use that disadvantage. Or, oh, you know, just chromosomal genetic disadvantage you've got in society to succeed. So we're going to talk about those two parts and what, um, what actually stuff there is out there uh, to give you that extra edge. So you've got everything the mainstream has and thankfully a bit extra. So we're going to use those bits as well. That's the standard. You don't need to look at this because Hader can give you, I'm going to put this on my LinkedIn afterwards so you'll be able to get this. Investor research. Well, wait a minute. How do I know which investors to speak? I haven't even got an idea yet, but that's a typical table. And then you're going to go through meeting them. That's going to be later on for most of you, because yet yeah, you need to know where am I going to get the ideas from, I'll for the business. What the hell does the business plan look like and how do I evaluate it to begin with? I'll put it on my LinkedIn. So that you can, you're free to take photos, um, but I'll put it on. And then you're going to go through, did I send the paperwork? Have they received it? Have they signed it? Have they confirmed that they've received it? Have I got the funds? How much am I looking for? Well, wait a minute, that's later on. And it is that boring and that much hard work. You all thought, it's going to be fun, but actually some of it is tedious. When we we're raising money for the fund, it was, I'd never want to do it again. It was that tediously boring. I want you to know what the statistics are. What percentage fail? How many get, how many are rejected after 30 minutes? 60%. This is data from an uh, organization called Mason and Harrison. But I, again, I'll share with you. Uh, Investors, which is an angel network and has events you should attend in London, all London business angels, just see people pitching. It'll give you that know-how of what succeeds, what doesn't. And they show you, okay, what kind of valuations who gets the money? How quickly are they rejected? And you find that actually most people are just rejected within the first 30 minutes to three hours. And you think, is it even worth it? Well, it is because you better find something which is that exciting that you know you have to do it. I have the 4 a.m. test, which is I'm either willing to work till 4 a.m. for it or I'm willing to get up at 4 a.m. for it. Now, you're students and you can imagine that's a pretty bloody good test because there's pretty few things you're willing to work. I don't mean chit chat about philosophy and the meaning of life till 4am but really work till 4am aside from an essay crisis the next morning or get up at 4am for then you know i think i might have a good idea something i have to do this is my destiny and if you haven't found it two little tricks make it bigger and bigger until you want to get up at 4am for it so if it's oh, i'll only make a couple of million okay right how do you make it into 20 million or 50 or find a bigger purpose so it solves a big enough problem something which gives you purpose and fulfillment. There's a great book called Drive, which explains what it is that led to people working three nights straight to create that phone, the iPhone, or such things for companies like Apple. And they became evangelical over it. I mean, what is up with these people? It's made of bloody plastic, glass, and metal. And they rave about it. Because if you look at Steve Jobs' videos from 1980, where he talks about, well, we're going to create this little thing, you can hold the hand, you'll have a lot of music. All right, okay, thanks, mate. Yeah, sounds great. To, before he died, it all became, well, no, we, our purpose is to bring happiness to people in the palm of their hands so they've got their memories and they've got a tune for their life. Same shit. Now it's 1,500 pounds. But guess what? Bigger purpose. I could get you all within Apple willing to work three nights straight for that. You're bringing happiness to the world. You'll believe it if I say it often enough, and then you'll say, wow, I work at Apple. Yeah, I mean, if you can get people working at Apple believing that, 
solving hunger, climate change, uh, discrimination, war, mm, none of those things. I'm making freaking phones. Have you got a phone? I'm making that stuff in your pocket and they're going to work three days straight for it. And it's a trillion dollar company. Purpose. So if you don't, can't get up and make the idea more purposeful. Okay. Now I'm going to show you why I invested in these companies. Why did I invest in these companies? What do they have? What should your, what should your business plan have to get investors? So it's not just me. It could be anybody. Because you can't get investors unless you're, is anybody here stupidly rich? You want to put your hands up? Pan. No? Okay. So you're going to need investors. You're not going to be self-funded. Right? Good. So if we're going to need investors, we better make sure that that deck is not going to hold you back. That you've learned today how to get a decent deck, presentation, that's one thing ticked off. So you're not wasting your time doing that. You don't waste your time learning that. Right? So what was it about those decks? And by the way, you all watch Dragon's Den, I assume. Please learn the basics. I mean, don't fall foul of the... Don't have a great idea and work your ass off for it and then not even know what any of these terms mean. And now you've got no excuse. You've got Google. You've even got ChatGPT. Okay, just learn what pre and post money valuations mean, please. Because otherwise, what's going to happen is the investor's going to think, yeah, you're a really nice person, um, but no. And you know the first round comes from friends, family, and fools. So if you ain't got rich friends... Your mum is who you're going to have to go to, because even your dad's probably going to be thinking, ugh. Uh, and uh, fools. If you can get a good collection of fools, you're laughing, but rarely happens. Rich fools, bit of a rarity. Might have to go to Switzerland for that one. And it's probably not worth the effort. So anyway, please learn what that says. Like I said, I'm going to make this available on uh, LinkedIn afterwards. And as an investor, I want to know how much do I get back and when do I get it back? So you're going to have to know about EIS relief. It gets boring, doesn't it? We thought it was all going to be about greatness. Somebody give me an idea of a business they've got. Like, don't make it so specific that you sue me five years from now, uh, claiming that I stole it. Clothing brand. Clothing brand. So it's a clothing brand for, you know, fine. I'm going to want to know, okay, I invest in Hayda's clothing brand. I'm going to, yeah, all right, mate. How much do I get back? EIS tax relief. If I put in, I don't know, 100 grand. How much do I get back? When do I get it back? So I can work out my IRR, internal rate of return. Easy to do, boring financials. But if you don't know that, you can't do the business because you're going to have to raise money because you already told me you don't have stupid rich friends and you're not stupidly rich yourself. So you're going to have to know that stuff. I don't want you wasting your time having done everything perfectly and been on the brink of the world's greatest clothing brand and then fallen because you missed that one bite at the cherry when the investor who otherwise would have invested said, I don't even bloody know the basics. How can I trust him? He's not financially... You can get away with it. Now, some people do get away with it. I think Jamie Oliver said on radio recently, he had no idea, but having said that, he's gone bankrupt a few times, so maybe you don't want to get away with it. Okay, so let's take CHIP. Why did I invest in CHIP? What did it have in common? The most important thing in any business for an investor to look at initially, it's not what you might think, which is, oh, this is a great opportunity. I was going to be a global business brand. I'm really passionate. I don't give a shit how passionate you are. We're all passionate when we all think we're going to be billionaires. Traction. I need to see some numbers. You know, how the hell am I getting numbers? Maybe it's I created 10 units and they sold out within 30 seconds within the university. I'm sorry, you're going to have to make some effort and you're going to have to give me some numbers. I don't know what those numbers are because in your business, it'll differ. If you've got traction, you have got a shortcut. And sadly, the number of people who do everything right, but they miss the traction bit, the momentum, and it could be anything, it could be subscribers, users, buyers, customers. If they haven't got that, then you've come to me too early. And that one coffee meeting you were going to have, you just wasted. Because they ain't going to see you again. Because you didn't even have the basics. And guess what the investor's looking for? They don't make money by just spraying it around to people they're not blood related to. We do spread it around to people who are blood related to. Sadly, you got to it's the law. But, you know, other than that, they want to see, have you got what it takes? You know, when you watch them on the X Factor and some of them think, they're really good. Or the other, you know, they've got that X Factor. Or the others, you go, what the hell? Has nobody ever told them they're crap? Oh, I'm afraid it's that little thing. We're trying to guess it. Now, with some people, there's a gray area. Pan, still not sure whether he's over there or he's over there. But there's a gray area. But most people, actually, it's black and white. 
they're amazing and you can tell wow that guy's going to make it if not this thing the next thing so traction that's how you're going to prove it and this is what slides of traction that raise millions look like you know at university one of the things which really pissed me off is that the tutors never i've got degrees in law philosophy politics and economics i have a shitload of degrees the tutors never gave me what a first class essay looks like that's my excuse i'm going to show you what a first, that's a first class slide that's how you're going to raise money. If you can't create something which doesn't have that kind of numbers behind it, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder. Which is good, because I've just saved you a lot of time. Because you thought it's about the idea. Eh, it's about those numbers. It's about, and, they don't, and by the way, I'm going to show you how to get these decks in the sector you're interested in. So clothes brands, you want to see a deck of a clothes brand. What's the Gymshark? They've got a clothes brand, haven't they? And they're amazing, aren't they? You probably want to see their deck. And you want to say, well, shit, what they die there? Because yeah, that tells me what the bar is. Like at university, you go and if the teacher says to you, this is what a first class essay looks like. Here's the books you've got to read. I want your essay, answer this question. At least you've got an idea now. Okay, shit, this is harder than I thought. Or, I don't know, easier than I thought. The place I get them from before I invest is Crowdcube. Crowdcube, it's a crowdfunding platform. There's others. I get them from there because I can see what's been vetted what somebody else has done the due diligence on, and what is investor ready. Why would I try and invent something from scratch for a whatever brand, retail brand, whatever, what, what business do you want to do? Uh, design brand. Uh, my own design brand. Your design brand as well, fine, fine. Clothing? Product. Okay. You're gonna need to know what a, you probably wanna know what a good deck looks like, because you wanna focus on the stuff you enjoy, the design part, getting the right people, the unique place in your market, and do all that kind of stuff you enjoy. Stuff you don't wanna waste time on is, what the hell does it look like when I'm raising capital? And what, what return am I gonna give Alpesh in five years? If you, you wouldn't want me in a design brand business, because I couldn't open many doors for you. But whoever you did want, numbers. Okay, Pocket's another one. Um, it's one that my, my wife is, um, global head of venture capital in the UK government and um, she helped them with their uh, capital raising. Uh, I didn't know she was helping them because if I did I wouldn't be allowed to have invested in them but I didn't know that uh, and there's numbers. You can read that in your own time but that tells you what the bar is. If you can't meet that bar keep working until you get to that bar because it'll save you a hell of a lot of time and when we see something like that do you know how long it took me to decide to invest in that? Well, it took me about 30 seconds to flick through the slides, and it took me another 30 seconds to wire the money. I've not met the founders. Wouldn't that be great if you could pull out a deck which was like that, where you could get the investor in 60 seconds and the money in your account? I didn't know him. So it wasn't to do with some personal connection. It's because they got the bloody numbers right. Okay, that's not easy. Because guess what? Getting rich ain't easy. Nothing worthwhile, whatever it is, is easy. But if you can get those numbers, do that first, please, for the love of God. And design it well. We will look for that. We'll look for little things like, well, if you can't even flipping get the spelling right, cover letters. It used to be cover letters at banks. Well, if you can't even get the cover letter right, well, no, so you can't get this. Traction, traction. They even have a slide saying traction. Okay? That's what we want to see. We want to see hockey sticks and we want to see that direct so crowdcube lets me see a whole load of these and then decide what to invest in and they even tell me how much i can make and how long it's going to take by the way if i ever do any angel investing i assume i'm never getting my money back it's just psychological it just helps me not get annoyed um and of all those investments that i just showed you the private companies i've not had one single exit from those we have in the private equity fund but in the angel ones i had one that doesn't mean those companies are rubbish they're really good and they're gonna, but they've just not exited yet because nobody's bought them out because they don't want to sell out yet and they've not IPO'd yet, which is fine. Okay, and the maths behind it. Investors is brilliant, okay? Because they also tell you what investors look for. They'll give you that insight you need to know. Because as I've already said to you and you've already agreed, you're gonna need investors. You're gonna need money. You might get some from winning competitions and the like at City and so on, but you're gonna you know, need to get some funding sooner or later. So, if you know these things, you've got an edge. You've got an advantage. Okay? Now, luckily, I'm a boring old lawyer, so I know what all of those sums... Anybody studying law? What is wrong with you? What are you going to do that for? Why'd you do law? 
why didn't you just say because you thought you might get to marry George Clooney? I would have found it more believable, you know? He's got a thing for lawyers uh, and young lawyers. George has got a thing for young lawyers. This, I keep forgetting it's live broadcast and he's got, he's got lawyers on his team. Just learn those things so you're better informed. You come across as a proper business person, as somebody serious, credible, I might want to invest in. And it doesn't take long. That's on the Einstein Challenge. It's also on um, a separate website, which is more updated, which I set up for all the global entrepreneurs that I bring to the UK called tech Too great tech Too the number 2 greatcom Every UK angel and VC group, what they do and their contact details. There's no point in having that if you haven't even got the pitch deck or the idea, and that's fine. Play around with the idea until you think, yeah, that's a big enough purpose. That'll get me out of bed at 4 a.m. I have to bloody do this. This is just too good not to. And if like Pan and Hilton, your city, and that's when the business plan Hilton set up, great, because you're at university and you're meant to study. You've got time to do it. Trust me, once you leave, you're just swamped with tax demands and stuff. You won't have time. Um, so it's a great time to be doing it. Funding grants from Innovate UK and every other funding source in the UK is on tech too great. Uh, dot com. There it is uh, at the top. Okay, every accelerator and incubator. Um, how to get introductions. I've even done a video on that, and we've also got them. Um, got some examples like you know how do I meet Bill Gates? Oh God, the number you would not believe the number of times people say, "Oh, I've got this great business plan. It's going to save the UK. Can I meet Rishi Sunak?" It's something about entrepreneurs that half of them are demented as well. Um, so how do you? get the right introduction. There's a way you've got to be able to do it. So I've done a little video on what you should say and shouldn't say and so on, because that's going to be a trick. I, as an introverted boy from Armley, only got to be in the hedge fund industry, which I have absolutely no bloody right to be in, because I could get that intro to the world's leading traders right, which was a shortcut to going 10 steps ahead, because time's limited. You can't wait until you accidentally happen to be sitting next to them on the tube. Ain't going to happen. They don't take the tube. In case you're wondering. Okay, so getting those introductions, the way to do it. Hader asked me, he goes, why did you turn up for the talk? Was it because I said I followed you on TikTok? I said, appealing to my ego, you might think was the secret uh, ingredient, but no, actually, as because you're an educational institution, whatever else it is, um, I'll get people who sometimes write to me and they'll say, I was in the armed forces, bang, you've got a meeting. Okay, or my mom's in the NHS, my mom was in the NHS, right, you've got a meeting. Or whatever else, okay? Um, but if there's an in, um, before I forget, I've got an event in Parliament, networking event. It's going to have about 200 people from the city. There's venture capitalists, hedge fund managers, financiers, bankers, all of those kinds of people, 200 people. It's a free event, October the 26th, I think it is. I'll put the details up on my LinkedIn. Um, uh, and we're partnering with, uh, because it's Black History Month, I'm also on the advisory board of um, British Black Business Institute. And, uh, but you don't have to be black to attend. We're not racist. Um, you can be same color as Pan or even Morgan. Well, Morgan needs a tan, but you know, <laughs> mate, tan up before you come to my event. Yeah, just too bright. I need sunglasses. But do come to that. It's a good networking event. Um, regardless of, uh, and actually, it's women in business, but men there. Don't try and stop me. They don't want me to stop. Do you want me to stop? Hey, they're trying to stop me. Yeah, you flexing. Um, October 26th, Parliament. How, who's been to Parliament? Two, 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 three. Right, the rest of you don't bring explosives that day, all right? It's October 26th, not, not the 5th of November. Top tip, just in case. Was that it? That went quick. We can do the Q&A if you wish. Um, the bits that I've missed. Uh, that slide, Tech to Great, or I'll repeat, Tech to Great will have all those resources. I think the Q&A, because I will have missed certain stuff. Uh, Q and A. Let's do it. Round of applause. Thank you. Sorry. I've got one there. That's great. Guys, first event uh, of the year. How, how are we feeling? Was that good? Are we impressed? Does Alpesh, does Alpesh get a thumbs up? I'm still here. Should I? Should I? Yeah. Should I is, he, is he getting an invite again next year, or should we? Alright. No, you know. Next week? All right. So we, are you busy this Thursday? We've got another event as well. Thursday. <laughs> Now, honestly, I enjoyed that myself. I shared with the audience as well. So we do a bit of Q and A now. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so there'll be lots I've forgotten. If it was up to me, we'd be here all evening. It's just catering. Um, they have yeah, to go by eight, so I want you guys to eat as well. So Q and A, but 
But I want to, I want to, you know, lead leadership, entrepreneurship. So yeah. I thought, let me take the, the podium and, and start off with a question for you. Sure. So a large element of um, of your speak, uh, of your speak. I kind of get my speech out today. Like, I have that effect. Uh, I know you're making, making me feel <laughs> nervous today. Um, a large element of your uh, of your of your talk today was about uh, using platforms like LinkedIn, networking, making yeah. good, a good impression, etc. Yeah. For most of the students here, especially the first years individuals who are just getting started yeah. with their degrees, or sometimes even people who are approaching their second, final years, yeah. maybe they're the first year of master students, whoever it may be. Yeah. What would be three easy tips for networking to make someone stand out, in your opinion? For me, it would be, as I said, try and find boards that you want to join. So for me, it happened to be Chatham House, United Nations Association, because I was interested in international relations. Funnily enough, one of the business people on the Chatham House board with me was Lord Lumba, and he eventually, I started doing fundraising, and he asked me to be on the board of the Lumba Trust, which looks after widows and orphans. Uh, so, and he's a businessman, so it was great having him as a mentor and advisor and also being able to do something useful than shuffling paper because we um, sponsored a lot of widows and orphans. So I would say find those organizations, whether it's charities or whatever, which resonate with you. And I didn't look at those to complement my business because they had nothing to do with the hedge fund industry. I did them because I wanted to, but actually if you find something which complements your area, so design, I don't know, it might be at the design council, they have a junior board of advisors, for instance, because they were looking for input from a generation that they might not be in touch with as much, but know they need to cater to. I'd start looking at those areas and thinking, well, how can I get involved? Or the VNA or whatever else. So you've got that Rolodex. And by the way, that's one of the reasons why the government then said, look, we want you to be a deal maker, which then, of course, exploded my networks to the extent you've seen my out of office. It basically says piss off to everyone, sadly. Apart from me. Uh, apart from you. Um, uh, and the reason it is, and you want to be in that position because it's a hell of a lot easier to get anything done. I mean, Pan, you'll say to me, oh, but you know everybody. Can you get, you know, I need to speak to so-and-so and whatever else. And it is, it's a, it's a superpower to build those networks up, do it sooner. The next thing is the event. So come to the, so when somebody invites you to something like the event in parliament, do it. First year, you might think, oh, I've got an essay to do and all the rest of it. Um, Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You've got some work to do, desk work, or there's someone you can network with. What do you do? You do the bloody networking because you never know where it's going to lead to. Okay? Um, so I'd say go to those events when you're asked. I mean, you shut when I ask you um, to this so, day. Yeah, I'm know. also going to say in regards to the event you've got coming up on the 26th, yeah. to make life easier, you can send me the link. and I can I'll send you the link. I'll make it a lot easier. Yeah, sure. I, I should say... It's not gender specific, because sometimes we get people saying, oh, but I'm not a woman, um, or race specific. Um, so I don't want people to think, oh, it's, it, 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 we've got everybody. Um, and it's not religion specific. I happen to be president of, or nationality specific, because I happen to be president of the India League and City Hindus Network, but it's got nothing to do with those two. It's, it's, it's open to everyone, so just so everyone knows. Because sometimes people think, oh, it's come from this institution. It must be only for, sure. for this. Um, and... Um, yeah. Should we get onto some audience Q&A? So we've got about, give or take about 10 or so minutes. So um, it'd be really awkward if no one has any questions after such, of course they such, such a, a jam-packed field. Uh, You're not allowed. Yeah. Go on. Go for right. it. My is not a question, actually. It's from my own experience mm. from cross-training, uh, race fans and stuff. So <clears throat> most of you here, they've got an idea, right? Mm. You think, oh, that's a great idea, right? You're obviously biased about your idea because you think it's the best thing of the slice bread. So yeah, I'm going to put this on full screen. Idea, if it doesn't solve a problem, from my point of view, don't bother. And when you have this idea that solves a problem, you need to solve the numbers like I was in the session before. Yeah. Because all the investors need to know how they're going to make money. They're not charities, right? They're not yeah. for the, because they like you or, or whatever. They want to make money. So you need to prove to them that you can make money. That's it, right? You just yeah. are targeting for a 10x to 100x, right? So the thing, I put a meeting with these guys, well, I'm going to put a meeting, I'm going to put a lesser amount. And they, they want also to participate if you raise money with somebody else. So it's like getting your first client, right? You need to get someone that was already invested in your company, and let's say, get someone to invest, and we're going to invest as well. So you need that first investor that's going to believe in you, and actually say, yeah, okay, so let's go. The thing is, these people, the investors, will shred you to pieces. I mean, this is not like a beauty parade, right? It's, it's like you need to prove to them that you know what you're talking about. So I did recently a Web3 startup, and it was a bit ahead of its time, I think, because it was very difficult for people to understand what it's doing. But that's, that's not like why. It was so difficult mm -hmm. to get people to listen to you and prove to them that the solution you brought actually works. And it's, you know, it's like you saw that person says, oh, 
uh, we are going to approach 1.7 yeah. million people. Everybody says the same thing. Everybody thinks they're going to approach the half of the earth, right? Because 1.7 million people, it, it's just like more or less mm -hmm. anybody has got money. Take children, housewives in some countries, oh. things like that, old people, and so on. So the other thing I want to say to you is don't be shy. Because a lot of people have got ideas, and they think that, yeah, that's great, yeah, and we're talking about that. They will find the Sorry. person. Is that your calling? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or send an email to people and say, for this idea, yeah. here's the proof, you know, can you actually go and, you know, are you interested in looking at me? And you can get a lot of rejections. I mean, Dropbox, okay, who's using Dropbox? Yeah, I'm not sure most of the people, right? Dropbox was rejected 60 times. But they had the balls to continue because they believed in, you know, they're solving yeah. specific problems that they do, but maybe the time was not good, whatever, but they were rejected 60 times. So most of the people, when they get a rejection, yeah. good they're going to stop. It's yeah. because they're shy, you know, it's like a, <coughs> it's like living below the belt, so to speak, you know, they just need to, um, to continue what they're doing. Yeah, that so I'm saying this from my own experience. No, no, I'm sorry, right. To me recently, and it was so tough, and I've got a fair amount of experience with this guy. No, you're absolutely right. It, it happens to you even if you're like Pan, 95 years old, or you're young like you guys. Um, and more, but on that important point of resilience, um, I had for the first book, it was 24 rejections till the 24th publisher said it's book number two, uh, speak to the Financial Times. For uh, becoming a barrister, uh, it was how many re how many chambers do you think rejected me? About Having met me, ha <laughs> sorry, 40. You're lowballing because you're being polite because I'm in the room. But having met me, you know that number is closer to 100, don't you? Right? It was closer to 100. I hear people saying, oh, I want to get a job at so-and-so. And I go, how many applications have you sent? And they go, 20. I'm like, oh, shut up and come back when you've grown up. So, yeah, unless you've sent 100 and you haven't got 99 rejections in your back pocket, you have not tried. Sure, we want to be the one who, you know, immediately sends it to Goldman Sachs and gets invited in by the partner to, you know, work in his private office. But it ain't going to happen. So that part because you, you've got it right you got the presentation right so you know your bits done they didn't reject you because you're rubbish because they would have told you no you just haven't done these things you've got everything done but they might say it's not really for us that's actually a good sign it means they don't have complaints about the basics it's just you've got to go to the right person which is why hopefully with the the links that i've got with the vcs that i've put on there every single vc you can put in design company in say software design software design let's say or whatever design you didn't say what kind of design Digital design. I still don't know what that means, but don't worry. Um, digital design, okay? Let's say website design. Like, let's say Wix. You've all heard of Wix, yeah? It's a billion dollar company, and it's listed. It's a billion dollar listed company. Oh, they did make websites, you'd think. But you've got that right, and then it's just right. I'm going to keep applying, keep applying, keep applying. And that's the easy bit, because that's just a process. And you'd look on the site and you'd say, right, turnover between this. So these are the angel investors, or these are the venture capitalists I should speak to. Did you want to say anything, Parash? I might do later. Later, okay. Um, did anyone from the uh, audience, the students, wise or alumni, did anyone have any specific questions for Alpesh? Uh, yes, sir, the back, please. Yourself, yourself, yes. Can we go on that side? I'll move across. Sir, I just wanted to ask you, why do you think that hedge funds failed so often? And what could someone trying to start a hedge fund do to make you? Uh, raising capital. They don't raise enough money. We didn't raise enough money. We. Um, so there's several reasons. So again, failure. More broadly about the question of failure, but I'll keep it specific on the hedge funds. I wouldn't start one up now. I'd do what we always talk about, which is fintech, because it moved on. I mean, when I was looking at you joined it in 1997? Yeah, 97. That was a good time. That was, that was the right time. I launched mine in 2004, which you could consider was a bit late. Now I wouldn't launch one. 90% of the money goes to 10% of the firms. And in this industry, in my industry, if you haven't got the money lined up, I don't care about your ideas because I can get strategies from the maths department at Oxford University all day long. It's the ability to raise money which matters in my industry, in private equity, venture capital, or in the hedge fund industry. We're going to launch a new fund, but this time what we're doing differently is we've got the money lined up, and we know what the number is. We want to have a billion lined up before launch. The mistake I made, which took so much longer, and I wish I'd known back then, there's this new show on BBC uh, Radio 4, What Would You Tell Your Younger Self? This time around, I tell my younger self, I didn't get enough money lined up. I only got a few million lined up, so it took longer. Only. Only. Well, it's their money. They didn't give it to me as a gift. Do you know what I mean? So when I say only, you're right, it's a big number, but it's still their money. It's not my money. It's not like they've said, here you go, I'll put your name. Like, um, so it, when you're managing assets, 
it's still their money. At least when it's a company, they get share. It's, it goes into your company account and you give them shares for it. In a fund, it's still it's like a bank account. You're just managing their bank account. So it's all their money. So get the money set up. I don't care about your strategies. You're going to write to me. You're going to say to me, you're right 100% of the time. Every week, you double your money. Uh -uh. Someone over there had a question as well, on the left-hand side. That uh, so I'll 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 tell you with besides besides the slides, uh, essentially it will be. I'd still end up having to repeat it. I'd I'd say what has made me invest other than okay, there's been friends and family, you know, a arm twist. I got to do it. It's an obligation. Um, so that's one. And then beyond that, it is that I saw who the co-investors were. So I knew I'd get an easy ride because I don't want to be an active investor. So if you can get a big flagship cornerstone investor, you're laughing. Anybody got any good famous friends who'd look good? No, seriously. If you have, you're laughing. Uh, yeah. Who? Yeah, well, if you can get them, and I'm being serious, if you've got an idea and you get them as a cornerstone investor, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a serious example. Uh, there's a company called Lunaz, uh, which retrofits into heavy duty vehicles like uh, garbage trucks, retrofits them so they become uh, environmentally friendly, they become electric, yeah? So Biffa, you know the big companies you see doing all the recycling and the garbage taking, they retrofit it so it becomes environmentally friendly. You know what got, the, I haven't invested in it, their, their son, the founder's son goes to my son's school. Uh, and my wife's helping them with the capital raise. Uh, what got our attention? David Beckham's an investor. I was, what the fuck does David Beckham know about electric batteries? I don't know, but he looks bloody good on the deck and some of his other investments, actually, he's not, the, the bloke's cleverer than I am. Moderately better footballer than me, but he's certainly cleverer than I am and his investment, yeah, so actually, credible investor, smart cookie. Uh, so yeah, on a serious note, if you can get them, it'd be great. It's just an extension of influencer marketing, but that's what we call it now, but back then. So what gets me interested? Who are the other investors? The numbers, the numbers. Uh, occasionally, very rarely, I might look at something, and, and this wouldn't fall in my remit, but I might look at something and just go off the idea. That's not me. Other people do it just off an idea and the individual. Let's say you have to invest one million yeah. in one year. How much yeah. would you expect in return for you to be satisfied with that? So let me answer that in a better way than just me, because I might have different, I'll give you an example, this actually happened to me. I, two people asked me exactly pretty much this question. One was the Hinduja family, and one was the middle family office. There's a chap called Alan Albert who headed up the family, and when I was pitching my head funny, he literally said to me, he goes, what do you think our hurdle rate is? Uh, the minimum requirement that they have f to invest in my fund. And I said, well, I'm hoping it's around 21% per annum because that's what we were projecting. He goes, no, the family hurdle rate is about 24.5%. That's their particular needs, okay? So what you really want to know is, what is the average investor's requirement? And Pan's mentioned it, that venture capitalists will tell you, uh, and it might be that some of them want 5x or 10x over five years, because they've got to make up for the losing ones. So you can work out the internal rate of return of that. For VCs, they'll probably say 40% IRR, which is basically 40% per annum interest rate. That's the return they're looking for. Ridiculous. Sorry, uh, sorry so far you're left to yeah. carry Oh, you've got to. No, just a few more questions. This side of the, uh, if you could take one more question from this side. But it's going to be ridiculously high and it's going to yeah. piss you off because you're going to say, you greedy capitalist pig not giving me a chance. How the hell am I supposed to deliver 40%? You loan sharking, it'll make you mad. That's why people hate the venture capital industry. Just do one question here and then maybe like one or two more this side. Can, uh, yes. Yeah. So it's a great question. What stage should we be at before we pitch? Do you know there's this old frustrating statement? Uh, a bank manager is somebody who gives you uh, an umbrella when it's sunny and takes it back when it's raining. And an investor is somebody who will happily give you the money when you barely need it because you're on such a high trajectory and you've got ample cash flow coming in and all the rest of it. And the reason they're doing that is because they've got a safer bet. So it's going to be easier for you to get money, easier for you to get money if 
your case is more solid. In other words, your case is going to be more solid if you're further down the line and you've got more traction. But you're going to say, well, wait a minute, that's a bloody catch-22. How do I get further down the line, sell more product without getting the money in the first place? Yeah, if I could solve that for you, I would. I would say the angel investors, I'd say the grants, the accelerators, the incubators, but the grant making bodies, which I list is the starting point. It's not VCs, VC, 2% of companies go to VCs. You're not gonna to go to a VC. You're gonna to go to the grant making bodies, possibly loans and the types of loans you want. For instance, I think British Business Bank still does unsecured loans. I might be wrong, ideally unsecured loans because you don't want it secured on your house. So let's say they give you 50 grand. So forget what I would for a million. You don't necessarily need a million because that's gonna be the first pushback I'm gonna give you. When you say, I need a million, I'm going to say, hang on, no, you don't. I've looked at your cash flows. Your most negative month means you're down an aggregate of 50K. So you don't need a million. Then you turn cash flow positive. So why do you need a million off me? You need just 50K. And you'll go, yeah, that's right, actually. And you better know how to work that out or you get an accountant to do it, um, but they'll work that out for you. But yeah, look at the grant making bodies and look at the, the loan making bodies that I've listed on there. So in practical terms, I've listed on those links, all the bodies which can give grants. And sometimes there's foundations which will do it depending on the nature of the business, especially if it's solving some, we had a company which I helped from, uh, which is in India, which was helping um, blind kids read. They'd learn uh, Braille faster. And uh, uh, I was at an event like this and the Mahendras happened to be there. And I said, look, this is amazing. And the uh, then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were there as well. So I said to Anna Mahendra, look, we've got the royal family here. You've got to invest. What a great business. I mean, the guy could not say no. They invested. That's luck. But they probably put that under philanthropy rather than big fat ROI. So whatever it takes, if it's the foundations, if it's the grant making, like I said, 100 rejections, that's a good sign that you've actually just started. Okay, so it's not going to be easy, but that's fine. Now you know it's not going to be easy, so you're not going to be disappointed. Now you're not going to be disappointed. Now you're going to, yeah, just, yeah, fine, got another rejection letter. I used to get these rejection letters in the morning from the various barristers' chambers. Sorry, I don't want to put you off, but I put it in my breast pocket. I think, oh, well, at least that's one more I know that I won't be working at. Just turned it around into a positive. But it takes that kind of psychotic mindset. But yeah, um, try and get any kind of evidence that'll work. There's even websites on there which create prototypes for you and then test it on large groups or something. There is something I've seen where they help entrepreneurs by just um, testing concepts so they can at least say we did a sample size of a thousand people showed our idea and they said this there is there is something if there isn't so that's a bloody good business idea but I'm pretty sure there is anything which can show me some kind of numbers and you know what the great thing is that first pitch deck is not going to get you your millions that's going to get you a brilliant education and that's great as well and then the next bit and the next bit. And the great advantage you've got you're starting so early so early you're like in my book you're like may I ask how old you are no, okay. May I ask how old you are? 25. 25. In my book, you're minus four. I didn't really earn money until I was about 29. So you're minus four. You've got, you're not even started. It's like term hasn't started. You're still at the start of the summer holidays and you're working for your first term. You've got an advantage. You've got an edge. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Can't shut me up. You go ahead. You go ahead. Um, You've got... Can we just take maybe one more question? I'll keep it short. I'll keep the answer short. And, uh, are, you, are you still here after? I'll stay behind. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Because we've got some networking as well after food as well. Sure thing. So if you guys sorry. didn't get a chance to ask a question, so we take the last question from. Sorry, tomorrow. And then, uh, then if you guys have specific questions, if our questions are willing to make sure we can. Solicitor or barrister? Yes, sir. Okay. Last question what? from Shamara. Corporate solicitor, would you mind leaving? <laughs> Seriously, oh no, you're right up there with venture capitalists and hedge fund managers, just evil. Oh yeah, doing good in the world, helping companies. Let me guess, corporate solicitor for oil firms? No, just for Environmentally unfriendly firms? Coal manufacturers? Full service. Full service, yeah, yeah, which means evil law firms. What's the, what's the, what's the question for? Yeah. Okay. co So I'll try and keep it short. Um, I discovered after a lot of effort, I shouldn't have co-founders. So a lot of it's going to be your personality. Um, I won't say there's nothing original I can say about co-founders, which hasn't been written about already. People who complementary skills, people who bring something that you don't have in the case of Mark Zuckerberg, the other guy with the money. Whatever it is, those are the ideal co-founders people you get along with, et cetera, et cetera. There's nothing original I have to say, I'm afraid, about co-founders. There is something to say about equity, which people um, often get wrong. Let's say myself, Pan, Morgan, and Parrish want to do a business. 
and we after this we go i'll go have dinner and we think of a great idea and we go yeah this is great let's incorporate a company tomorrow it costs 100 quid split the equity four ways and then after two weeks i'm on the phone to pan saying wtf dude how come we do actually speak like that wtf dude how come you're not showing up for the board meetings and you've got to do this you haven't done your bit and Paris goes oh bloody hell i've got to do all the donkey work uh morgan's like just no we can't find him okay well why the hell did we do it four ways so better uh, it is that there's an earning dependent on you know each week you work you get a percentage of equity based on those weeks and somebody's a no-show great pan earned himself five percent over the first six months then oh morgan earned himself five percent over the first six months then fell in love the idiot and went off and lived in bali well, great. He's got his 5%. He worked for that. He's not getting 25%. Bugger off. We don't have to kill him anymore. Okay, so the earning stuff is um, a lot lot better way of doing it. That's great. Can I, can, I, can I cut you there? Is that okay? Are you happy? There's a knife crime problem in yeah. London, but Excuse I don't think that's what you mean. Can I stop you? We can, no, no, we that's can go. Honestly, guys, I know there were probably more questions to be, to be, uh, to be asked and answered. It's just uh, limited on time. There's food outside. There's quite a bit of food outside. And I want you guys to you know, not rush eating as well. Um, are you okay for people to come up to you, ask you questions, just have a conversation with you? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on LinkedIn, Alpesh Patel OBE? Yeah, that, there's a few Alpesh Patels. Yep, okay. So be sure to connect with Alpesh. Uh, sorry, guys, one sec, one sec, one sec. I promise it's just the last bit from me before we go today. So the next event we have taken place, sorry, guys, I promise I'll be at 20 more seconds. The next event we have taken place is this Thursday evening. Similar start to this, we've got Hubba coming in as well. And then from Tuesday onwards, we've got a lot of great entrepreneurs coming in. Um,